I have been sort of secretly working on a chemistry based survival game for the past year or so and it's time for me to show you all what I've been working on. This game is based on chemistry, meaning that you can like go around, collect the items and then come back, bring them to your laboratory and conduct research on them, see what's different, see how they interact with each other. But the main gimmick of the game is that you can turn anything into its atomic form. And then from those atoms, you can create new objects. Like maybe you could, I don't know, in the future change your atomic numbers to turn them into something different, like a different material. You can make an acid to burn through something or anything you want. Create new molecules to see how they interact with everything and each other. Discover new elements that have never been seen on Earth before. Just talking about this game is getting me hyped. Yes, I am a nerd. And while this game is mostly based on putting things down to their atomic forms and to then build other stuff, it's also got other aspects in it. Like you can make a medieval catapult to get your things around requiring the knowledge of physics, mathematics, and so on. You could research the plant life and maybe even get to know other forms of life, getting biology into the whole mix. The reason behind this game is I wanted to make chemistry, physics, biology more fun to study, to learn. I want to make something that is hellishly boring in schools and give it a fresh take as a video game. I will try to make this game as accessible to somebody who has never seen chemistry to understand the concepts behind it, but for somebody who has finished their study age, to be able to do something more interesting and so on. This game might not be the most fun for all, since it is based on what it's based, but I still like the idea that somebody might start liking and working in one of these fields due to this game that this game helped them get through the boring parts of having to study and hit their heads against the books and just got them to feel free to enjoy science like it was meant to be. Now, I have tried developing this game before, three years ago to be exact, but at the time I had to make a lot of these illogical leaps due to a lack of knowledge in science, knowledge that through the last three years I gained, at least enough to be able to make about 70% of the game and for the other 30%, I'll learn it through my school and other stuff. At the time, I also thought of making the game be more fictional based, maybe have a custom periodic table, elements, and other things like that, but, but now I really want to focus on making the game present chemistry in a fun way, and that's why I need to make it in a real way, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, now that we got through the sippy sappy part, let's get onto the game itself. Here's how the story goes. You're a scientist from a far future where humans have developed intergalactic travel, meaning that they can travel anywhere in their galaxy with basically instant speed, more than less. They don't need to build rockets nor have preparations for that, they just go for it. The way they did that was using spheres. These spheres have everything necessary to conduct research on other planets and human survival. It's a pretty long story on how they got that working, so I won't go into that, but the important part is that you were traveling with one of these spheres to an unknown planet. But somewhere on your way you noticed a weird feeling. It felt like the world was turning upside down. Inside out, what was real was no more. You knew this could only mean one thing. You had to have passed through a wormhole somewhere on your way. But this wormhole led to a place that you have never seen before. You have never even heard of it. You check your wormhole map and even the book called Wormholes Alphabetically Ordered. There was no sign of it anywhere. You realize that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You wanted to research anything and everything on this newly found land, but first you tried setting up a signal with the other people and failed. You at this point, realizing you're stuck with no way back, hope to find something that might give you some sort of hope of return on this land, with very little hope, since it seems empty, like there is nothing, but it is your only option if you wish to continue living. Okay, now to cover one of the most important parts of this game's development, mass calculation, as I call it. The thing we're trying to get here is how many atoms you get from like 720 grams of silicon dioxide, which is a key building part in stone. A mole represents an amount of something, 
Not to go too much into detail, it represents a very big number of something. The way you calculate this is by getting the silicon dioxide's mole mass. You do that by combining one silicon's atom mass and two oxygen's atom mass, giving us approximately 60 grams per mole. That means that for every 60 grams of silicon dioxide, we have one mole of silicon and two moles of oxygen, meaning that for our initial 720 grams, we have four moles of silicon and eight moles of oxygen. These can be turned into atomic amounts and masses, but we don't have to go there. This was also one of the big reasons why I couldn't develop this game in the past, because I just didn't know any of this. Okay, usually when it's the first devlog, I don't like adding anything. I just like presenting the game as it is at the time. But since this devlog is completely going off the rails, I will add something in the first devlog. So let's add a machine that recognizes objects and show you what atoms are in it. We can do this by using the item scriptable objects and adding a new input for chemical compounds and the object's mass, since those are the only two things we need to calculate this. The reason we're doing this is so that in the future, it's easier to add more things without needing to make more complex scripts. At this point, we just make a script that calculates all this and gives us the values, which we covered before. Then we have to represent these values on the screen, which we can do by using some cool sliders. Okay, now that's good, but I want a little animation here. Maybe something like a side switch of the sliders? Hmm, something else is missing. Maybe throwing in some color changing next to that? Uh, yeah, 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 that looks nice. Good enough to keep. Now let's get to adding some small particle effects and the animation is done. By pressing the button, all of the moles are getting sent to the game object called the pipeline, which is going to be like a manager that never gets deleted and has all the amount of chemicals in it. Now the only thing left to do is fix some small bugs like this one and the new feature is added. Okay, now this is the part I always want to do for my games and videos. But if you join my Discord server, you will have a chance to vote on a next feature that gets added in the next devlog. This feature will be added onto whatever I'm already developing in the devlog, but it's going to be a small part where you guys can interact with the game. Okay, now just to not make this too complex, you will be given three options to vote from. As you have guessed, the most popular one will be in the newest devlog, to be introduced into the game. Now that we're done with that, let me give you your first three options. The first option is adding weather into the game. Maybe something like acid rain or, or a dust storm or maybe some random explosion due to chemical mixing on a surface. The second option is adding a minigame. Something like maybe solving a Rubik's Cube to waste some time or playing chess. Or maybe even something random as solitary. And the third and final option you have to vote for is dangerous fumes. Fumes that can hurt or even kill the player when they come in the radius. This means that we would have to figure out how you would kill the player, what happens when they die, or something maybe like they don't respawn, they maybe just like wake up in a different place, or some, something like that. Now, just to make something clear, all of these ideas will be programmed into the game. So if one doesn't get picked, that doesn't mean it will never be added to the game. It's more just you're picking the priority of them in my list of priorities. Okay, now for the very small amount of people that watched my last video, where I started development on a small metroidvania with a semi-cool concept, where I said that that game would now be the one I would be developing. I still will be, it's just that this game has higher priority. That doesn't mean that the other game won't get any devlogs, it just means that there will be less devlogs from that game than there will be from this game. And getting that cleared up, was very important to me, since I've gotten a lot of confused comments if I didn't. I know, I know you guys. Even though I'm guessing that the people who didn't stay around to the end will still be confused about this and will still comment in the comments. Got you people. Alright, I think that's everything about this project cover. I hope you stick around with me and maybe even join the Discord so that you can vote on upcoming features. That, that'd be nice. I'll try being more consistent with my uploads from now on since that helps me to be more motivated to develop my games, it keeps you guys to know what's going on, and even if I like add some small features, I can share that, I don't need to build something huge, a huge devlog, I can just make a small feature where, I don't know, I add like 
a machine or like two machines and that that's it i don't i don't need to make a video where i program the entire survival mechanic where i make the grappling hook and stuff like that well yeah that that's all for this video until next time that's going to be it for me see you all next time in my next video which should be coming out very soon